Nous allons donc maintenant parler de la communication mondiale qui a été faite sur l'antibiorésistance et des efforts qui ont été faits par l'OIE et la tripartite. Et je vais commencer, une fois n'est pas coutume, par l'histoire d'une réussite, parce que je pense qu'on peut vraiment appeler ça une réussite. C'est le travail collaboratif qui a été fait entre l'OMS, la FAO et l'OIE depuis trois ans pour vraiment communiquer au niveau international sur ce sujet. Pour cela, on a bénéficié de quelque chose de très important. C'est un objectif clair et commun. Cet objectif clair et commun est la sensibilisation pour une meilleure compréhension de ce que c'est que l'antibiorésistance, la résistance aux antimicrobiens, si on donne dans le bon sens, à travers une communication efficace, mais aussi de la formation et de l'éducation. Cet objectif, qui est le premier objectif du plan d'action mondial qu'a publié l'OMS en 2015, est aussi le premier objectif de la stratégie de l'OIE sur l'antibiorésistance et de la stratégie de la FAO sur le même sujet. Dans le plan mondial publié par l'OMS en 2015, il y avait une chose particulière, la création de la semaine pour le bon usage des antibiotiques. On parle d'antibiotiques à l'OMS, nous parlons d'antimicrobiens, mais là n'est pas le sujet. Cette semaine a vraiment pour, avait vraiment, en 2015, quand elle a été créée et continue aujourd'hui, a pour objectif de mettre sur le devant de la scène internationale pendant une semaine cette thématique, et vraiment de pousser tous les acteurs de la santé humaine, de la santé animale et de main de l'environnement à communiquer sur le sujet et à expliquer ce qui peut être fait et ce que nous faisons tous pour avancer dans cette lutte. Je vous parle de réussite parce que depuis le début, depuis 2015, depuis la publication de ce plan, les trois organisations ont travaillé ensemble de façon à communiquer d'une même voix. Ça a commencé en 2015 par la création par l'OMS d'un logo et d'un slogan qui est « Handle Antibiotics with Care », donc « Utiliser les antibiotiques avec précaution ». Dès 2015, nous avons fait ensemble des documents tripartites, mais aussi intégré ce logo dans les, différentes, les différents outils de communication des organisations. En 2016, ce logo est devenu tripartite, avec ce que vous voyez sur la gauche, sur la gauche, sur la gauche une identité visuelle complète qui a été distribuée au pays, avec également des messages communs, des messages déclinés pour tout, toutes les parties prenantes de tous les, euh, les secteurs. Ces messages qui ont été aussi repris dans plusieurs documents qui ont été distribués à l'Assemblée générale des Nations unies en 2016, lors du au panel de, du meeting de haut niveau dont vous avez probablement entendu parler. En 2017, nous avons fait un pas de plus. Nous avons créé, à l'initiative de l'OMS, mais c'est devenu tripartite tout de suite, une plateforme de communication qui permet de communiquer au grand public sur ce que c'est que l'antibiorésistance. Et donc cette plateforme, co-brandée par les trois organisations, permet aussi d'accéder à une sorte de carte interactive où vous pouvez publier vos événements donc je vous invite à le faire dans deux semaines, on va en reparler dans pas longtemps, euh, publier les événements qui sont organisés dans les différents pays. Ça vous permet de mettre en avant vos actions. C'est aussi une plateforme qui vous permet d'accéder à tous les outils de communication qui sont développés par les trois organisations. On va reparler des outils de, de communication développés par l'OIE dans quelques minutes avec Taylor. Vous pouvez trouver... Euh, je ne peux pas revenir en arrière avec... Vous pouvez trouver l'accès à cette plateforme sur le site de l'OIE, le site de l'OMS et je pense bien le site de la FAO aussi, qui sont en train de remettre à jour. Donc c'est vraiment, tout est téléchargeable, vous pouvez tout utiliser. Je pense que c'est compréhensible. Et en 2018, dernier pas, et Dr Stone en a parlé ce matin, nous avons mis en place un plan d'action, un plan de travail commun des trois organisations en termes de communication. Ce plan d'action a plusieurs visées. Nous allons mettre en place un répositoire d'expériences, de, de, non seulement d'outils, comme on a déjà, mais aussi d'expériences venant non seulement des organisations internationales, mais aussi des pays, des acteurs, euh, autres, publics et privés, sur le changement de comportement en termes d'antibiorésistance. Ce sera vraiment une plateforme qui vous permettra de partager des expériences, des outils, des interventions 
de, euh, de changement de comportement euh, à ce niveau-là. Il y aura aussi un travail fait en termes de promotion, bien entendu, de sensibilisation toujours, puisque la communication reste importante pour déclencher l'intention de changement, euh, de promotion, notamment au travers de la semaine de l'antibiorésistance chaque année. On va aussi travailler sur le changement de comportement, et cela sera fait par, euh, au travers de formation, de, de formation et d'aller dans les pays pour les aider à mettre en place des plans de changement de comportement sur l'antibiorésistance. Voilà les dates de la prochaine semaine. Donc on se donne rendez-vous le 12 novembre, ce qui veut dire demain, pour reparler d'antibiorésistance pendant une semaine entière, tous ensemble. J'en finis avec la tripartite pour venir maintenant à l'action qui a été menée par l'OIE et qui, vous verrez, prend complètement part à cette, euh, cette, cette initiative tripartite. Il s'agissait de communiquer en matière de santé animale, puisque nous sommes l'Organisation mondiale de la santé animale, de communiquer à tous nos acteurs. Comme vous l'avez vu, tôt dans la journée, comme le docteur Schilt l'a indiqué tout à l'heure, la communication, la sensibilisation sur l'antibiorésistance est la première, le premier objectif de la stratégie de l'OIE. Notre question était, comment faire pour faire connaître nos normes internationales, surtout le contenu de nos normes internationales, qui indique en matière d'utilisation de, de, responsable et prudente des antimicrobiens, qui indique à tous les acteurs, à chacun des acteurs, si j'ose dire, quelles sont les actions à mettre en œuvre. Je l'avais compris avec Elisabeth, le changement de comportement dépend aussi d'un contexte. Et si on permet aux vétérinaires et aux éleveurs d'être dans un contexte où ils ont accès à ce qu'il faut pour pouvoir bien utiliser les antibiotiques, les antimicrobiens, nous aurons déjà fait un grand pas. Donc il fallait créer cette campagne pour renforcer la sensibilisation sur le contenu de ces normes et aider à leur implémentation, au niveau, à leur mise en œuvre au niveau national. Et il fallait créer des outils et un panel d'outils qui soient facilement utilisables par les services vétérinaires, puisque ce sont nos, nos principaux relayeurs d'informations au niveau des pays. Donc c'est à eux que nous fournissons ces outils et ce sont eux qui les mettent en œuvre dans les pays. Par contre, je ne sais pas si vous savez ce que c'est que communiquer à 182 pays et de créer un, un panel d'outils pour 182 pays qui ont tous des niveaux de revenus différents, qui ont tous des situations différentes, des cultures différentes. Voilà, c'était un bon challenge. Il nous fallait donc une campagne mondiale, multiculturelle, qui touche tous les acteurs de la santé animale et qui ont leur rôle à jouer, notamment au travers des normes, qui engage ces acteurs, qui soient impactantes, et qui laisse une trace dans la mémoire quand on la voit, et qui permettent de partager de nombreuses informations. C'est comme ça que la campagne « We need you », nous comptons sur vous, est apparue. Et pour cette campagne, nous avons décidé de donner la parole aux animaux. Nous avons donc créé notre famille d'animaux, car au bout du compte, ce sont eux les bénéficiaires de toutes les actions que nous allons mettre en œuvre, puisque au travers d'un usage responsable et prudent des antimicrobiens, c'est leur santé animale et le bien-être animal que nous allons protéger. Et au travers d'eux, la vie et les rentrées d'argent de nos éleveurs. C'est à ce moment-là que je vais passer la parole à Taylor. Uh, thank you, Catherine, for the introduction and for kind of setting me up for success in the rest of the presentation. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be here to speak with everyone. And I will start by taking us just, just back a little bit in time before the creation of the We Need You campaign. And the OAE worked with its member countries to survey individuals to really learn and to understand what veterinary services needed to communicate with their stakeholders, and who are the individuals that they're communicating with. So we wanted to know who you speak with and how. And as part of this survey, 
we had 133 respondents from 95 countries. Um, so we had a very strong turnout and were able to gather a lot of information um, from many parts of the world. An example of this question is uh, a question that was on the survey. Do you ever use printed material, events, media, digital channels in previous communication campaigns? And why this is important to understand is if you're creating a campaign that's internet-based, this is a tool that maybe veterinarians and paraveterinarians would use on the internet when they're working with their patients. But the veterinarians and the paraprofessionals don't have access to adequate internet services when they're out in the field with their patients. If you create a campaign that interacts with them in that way, it's not going to be successful. So it's important to understand what are the good ways that this information can be transferred? And that's what makes it an easy to use tool. And in addition to that, um, kind of building, um, what is the internet access in your country? Um, we consider um, looking at print material instead of um, internet access. So here individuals have reported um, that 67% of their patients um, or targets do have good access to internet. And that's a pretty good amount. But if you're working with paraprofessionals in the field, we may need an option that's different so that they can also communicate that information in an effective way without using the internet. So another option is in this case, you may want to have an internet option, but you may also want to have a print option. And so from this information, we were able to put together the We Need You campaign. And starting in 2017, um, there were a series of tools that were delivered. Um, in 2018, we currently have the We Need You animal posters. And so we've opened it up to have many different animals um, in a case where you maybe are only working with cattle and you want to have the cow poster. Uh, we do have a series of leaflets which target specific stakeholders. And we know that when you're creating a broad message that covers everyone, you're ultimately speaking to no one. And so these leaflets target individuals and tries to put the information in a situation that's relative and understandable and applicable to the audience that it's speaking to. Um, we also have campaign videos, social media squares, website banners to continue to have that message shown in the different ways that you communicate, um, whether it's on social media or just in your regular emailing. We did have a request. Um, in certain countries, radio is a popular media that a lot of farmers will tie into. And so we did provide a radio script this year um, that's available to be translated into a local language and to use uh, a local speaker. And in addition to that, we also have a campaign website. And so we put together an area where you can find all of these tools in an easy to use site. And it's organized by stakeholder. So if you're a veterinary services and you want to speak to um, a specific target, you can explore your opportunities and the tools available to you through that site. And the website name is down there, oae-antimicrobial.com. And as I mentioned, we do have posters of the family. And so we're excited to have um, each of the new animals in addition to a family poster with everyone. Uh, just a good way to start to get the uh, discussion going. I'm a fan of all of them. The fish is a new addition this year. It's particularly cute. And we also highlighted specific stakeholders. And with those stakeholders, they have specific tools that are targeting them, speaking in a language that they understand, and speaking about um, actions that they can do that are simple. And all of these leaflets also tie in and follow the OIE international standards. And so it's an easy way to communicate about these standards in a very applicable way. And so this year we have veterinary services, veterinarians, policymakers, farmers, veterinary students, animal feed and manufacturers, wholesalers and distributors, and the pharmaceutical industry. 
And so really playing on the idea of we need you, and we need this to be a collective effort. We need to engage all stakeholders, because it's not just an issue of a farmer purchasing antibiotics without a prescription. It's an issue of distributors giving and selling antibiotics without a prescription. It's incentives that you may find in different parts of the chain. So it's important to think about this picture as a whole and not just one individual. And we also have social media tools. Looks like one is not quite working, but we have two that are working. Um, we have GIFs this year, which present simple key messages, and they also use our family, and we've animated them. Um, we have social media squares, and then we have the website banner on the bottom. Great. And this year we have video number two of the We Need You campaign, and we're really focusing on simple messages, and I'd like to share this video just at the end of the PowerPoint. And so we do all of this work, and one of the really important things that I encourage everybody to consider and to, and to do is not just to do your research, develop a campaign, but to also do the research at the end. Was it effective? How did people respond to it? Because it really offers an opportunity for you to learn what you could do better, and it also offers you an opportunity to refine, to find an area that you might have missed and so in 2017, there was an assessment survey of the campaign from the previous year. There were 99 respondents from, from 81 countries. So again, a very good turnout with a diverse um, number of individuals. And we found that 90% found the tools appropriate. So the language and the messages that were being shared were appropriate for the audience that we were speaking to. And that's important to know. If we're maybe using terms that are too complex, or we're creating too many steps that make it difficult for individuals to follow through with an action, then we need to maybe break down the process more. And so it's good to know that. Um, 37 countries reported that they had used the campaign. And um, using that directly, countries also maybe used it as inspiration for their own campaigns. And so it can be used in different ways. And we found that 14 countries had translated it and adapted it. And so language is a very important thing to consider. If it's not in a language that's widely known, or it's not in the right language for the group that you're working in, you do need to accommodate to make sure that it is understandable. And so through this um, assessment, um, we identified in the first campaign that farmers were an incredibly important target for disseminating communication materials. In the first round, there wasn't a farmer's tool. So we had missed it. We had an opportunity to share information and to help veterinarians and veterinary services speak to their patients, the, the owners of their patients, um, and, and share this information. Because it's a difficult thing to learn how to communicate on. And so for 2018, we welcomed the farmer's tools. In 2018, um, we, what we have in development at the OAE. Um, through our communication um, survey, we found that 98% of countries expected to communicate on antimicrobial resistance in 2018. And that was up um, a, a good percentage um, from the year before who had actually communicated versus who want to. So the idea is moving from intention to actual action. Um, but one of the good steps uh, that we see is that 51% have already have a plan. So having a plan is a very good start. Um, this year in 2018, um, we're aware of eight additional languages that are being added to our campaign materials. Um, we had new materials that were added. Um, so in addition, we had veterinary services, the new posters, a new video, and a radio script. Um, for veterinary students, we have a leaflet. Uh, veterinary service, or sorry, veterinary students actually requested their own material, so this was a nice addition. We have the farmer's leaflet and infographic, and we have media, media resources. And all of those can be found on the website. Okay. From communication to behavior change. So in addition to the communication tools, we've also focused 
on building capacity and communication, as well as behavior change. Uh, so since 2014, the OIE focal points of communication um, have had regional seminars, where we invite them to an area to help build and strengthen the capacities of veterinary services and risk communication. Um, so far, we've had 13 regional and sub-regional seminars in those years. Um, we've had participation of experts from both the WHO and the FAO. So really to keep this as a tripartite effort. We've had uh, around 350 members um, from National Veterinary Services trained. And so it's a, it's a big effort that's really been continued for many years uh, to reach as many individuals as possible. And it's always nice to see individuals coming back. They know the material. Some have stories about how they've used it. And so it's good to see that that information is making it into um, the work that they're doing in their country. And in addition to that, we also have the OI Communication Handbook available. And this was a collaborative effort um, that built off of the W or the World Health Organization's um, communication training. And so really a collaborative effort um, that was made available to our audience at, through Animal Health. And it is also available online. So it's not something you need to find and purchase in paper. Um, you can also view this information uh, electronically. Great. All right. And so in 2017 to 2018 series, um, through the OIE communication focal point seminars, um, we included a, mo a morning that was dedicated to behavior change and building um, with the one main topic of antimicrobial resistance. So behavior change and the theories and the methods behind it can definitely be applied to many different um, behaviors you want to change. But we focused on antimicrobial resistance as a priority. And so as to kind of build off of um, Elizabeth's presentation earlier, um, we really focused on the idea that behavior change is not linear. Behavior change has a lot of directions it might go. And so we worked with individuals to understand that and to build a better program. As a part of that, um, we did ask individuals to participate in an activity that um, looked at concepts and methods that were presented to focal points and um, turned it into an exercise. And so we looked at actors, uh, behaviors wanted, barriers that are getting in the way of that behavior becoming a reality, uh, we looked at interventions that could be created to create to create behavior change. The timeline of how long this was going to take, it's important to consider because it, it can take a while. And then how are you going to measure it? Um, in one of the previous um, presentations, they said, you have to have a way to measure the interventions um, that you are inputting. And so it's a really important thing to know if you're being successful. And we asked individuals to put down information on policymakers, farmers, veterinarians, industry retailers, and public slash consumers. And what we saw from that um, was that a lot of individuals were talking about awareness. It's very difficult to create change in a topic if your audience doesn't understand this complex, um, this complex topic. Antimicrobial resistance can be a very complex topic to communicate on. So we also need resources, and we need funding for these campaigns. Um, we need legislation, consistency, um, many of these other things that we talk about a lot, um, but they came through in this exercise. So I really would like to uh, emphasize how important these pieces are. Okay. Great, thank you for your attention. I'm gonna wake everybody up a little bit. Um, with a video. Please. There we go. I'm 
Online as well as our YouTube channel.